Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Terran News Network, your most trusted source for news in the Terran Republic. Our main story tonight is about the impassioned speech made in front of the combined houses of Congress by outgoing President Henry Iverson and Secretary of the Navy Debika Magyar, calling for war emergency powers to enable a military operation consisting of the First Fleet making an attack in the Geo Virginis system to avenge the destruction of the diplomatic ship commanded by Elena Marcos. After limited debate, Congress approved these measures in a vote of 1,463 in favor to 536 against. Shortly after this news was first announced, the First Fleet quickly sprang into action and started its journey towards GL Virginis. That is all for this special news report from Terran News Network, voted the most trusted source in news in the Terran Republic. If we're not talking about it, it's not important. Glory to the Republic, and we will see you next time. Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Aurora 4X C Sharp. So this time we are finally, finally getting out there and sending our fleet out towards GL Virginis. One thing I do want to ask you all, because this game can have periods of just really not much happening, I'm curious if you all would prefer if I edit down the not so interesting parts or even potentially just off screen um more of that downtime because i mean i'm fine doing either personally or even just continuing things as they are i'm just i'm curious as to what you all would prefer because i will admit that we do have times where just nothing really happens and it's kind of hard to make any of that exciting. Because, shocker, when there's not much happening, it's hard to be able to say, yes, that is definitely what I was going for. So let's go ahead and get the Carrier Strike Group heading out to GL Virginis. But we are not going to actually fly through the jump point with the fleet. At least, not initially. We have stabilized our side of the jump point. So the plan is a very simple one. We're going to send an observation craft through. So we will do a move to location. The reason for this is simply to see if the enemy fleet is right there. If they are, then shit, we need to back off. If they're not, however, then we can basically send the fleet through, be ready to engage, and we're not trying to, like, break a blockade type thing. So we're just doing a move to location and actually double check that, that it was just a move to location. Yes, it is. Okay, good. We're doing a move to location right on the jump point for the simple reason that I want to immediately jump through the jump point if it is clear. But I basically need to figure out if it is clear first. So we got the fleet moving out. Uh, civilian f shipping being attacked in Captain's Star again. Not too surprising. I well, I say again. I think I think it was here that they were being attacked before. Very least. Somewhere along this route was being attacked before. I believe it was this same system. Fortunately, there's nothing I can really do about it. Also, why is Carrier Strike Group 1 not moving out at all? Or did they? And I... I swear I still see Carrier Strike Group 1 here. Uh, no, I think I was seeing Cargo Fleet 1 and then Expeditionary Strike Group 1. And that all just kind of threw me off. So let's head off to, uh, oh no, it's Omega SETI.
and we'll see the fleet. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know the civilian shipping is being destroyed. There's really nothing I can do about it. It's physically impossible for me to get a fleet out there in a timely manner. I mean, I could send a fleet out. I probably should send a fleet out. So... Interestingly, neither of you guys seem to believe that you can make that trip, which may or may not be accurate. I realize you guys don't actually carry all that much fuel. But I'm pretty sure it's enough to be able to get there. So I don't know why you guys seem to believe you can't, you can't or at least it's not showing up in the auto route by system. Which is weird, because it probably should. So, Saiseti, Ursa Majoris, Epsilon, Horologi, Kuiper 79, Mu Reticuli, 117, Iota Doradus, 115, Capitan's Star, And where does that drop us off relative? That drops us off over here. We will then need to fly roughly out towards the star, but that doesn't exactly work. Well, actually, no, it does. Because the Lagrange points are in the absolute most useless locations possible for any trip that our shipping would ever take. This really is the absolute most useless Lagrange points for a route that takes you across the system like this. So we don't even really use those, apparently. Why is it showing... Oh, no, excuse me, those are the grain... Well, there's two stars here, apparently. Really? Oh, okay, yes, up here. Why is that star... Oh, no, excuse me, never mind, never mind. I'm reading it wrong. I'm an idiot. Never mind. I forgot the name of the system. Um, Just fly out to the center. No, not a geological survey. Move to location. Jump back to Omega SETI so we can observe the fleet as it moves into position. And as our civilian shipping gets absolutely wrecked. The reality is I could turn off the raiders because they're not really an issue. Like, they're not a threat. They're an annoyance. That is the only thing they have going for them. Is that they are annoying to deal with. Because when we engage them, we have no problem destroying them. Except for the last part, but that was mostly just because we didn't have a fleet. We were relying on two of our latest, but admittedly outdated in some ways, um, STOs, and not nearly enough STOs for the invasion force that they sent. Let's send you through. You are on the other side. You are not picking anything up, at least not immediately. But that doesn't really mean anything necessarily. Because if the enemy is stationary, you won't detect them. So we're going to wait a couple of ticks just to give an opportunity. The enemy has active sensors on. We should be detected. I 
about you fly out to one? Or excuse me, to five, rather. I don't know why I said one. I meant five. Okay. We're still not picking anything up. So I think we can jump through without any serious issues. And you can remove your orders. Also, we are bringing some of our jump ships out. So that we can very quickly move to stabilize the other side. Uh, push come to shove, either to evacuate the fleet in the worst case scenario, which I don't see happening, or to um, get the, well, or, well, to retrieve the fleet after the expedition is done. No, 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 no. Oh, what, what are you choosing as your default? To join and fleet? Yeah, that's not what I want you to do. Land on assigned mothership slash squadron. Carry strike group one. Um, I don't recall which one we determined is likely where they are. I think it was GL Virginis 2. Because that is a terrestrial world with alpine grasslands. And a liquid level of 84.1% for the hydro level, sphere, whatever the hell the term is. Uh, it's also the only one that is blue, so it's the only one that we ourselves could reasonably optimally colonize. So it's a reasonably safe bet that this is where they are as well. So we are going to do a move to location. We are going to hang back relatively far. I'm thinking about, well, the enemy has decent sized ships, I believe these are, based off the little bit of intel we have on them. Yeah, we have very limited intel on them, but I believe they are generally large enough that I should probably pick them up with our resolution one, or excuse me, our resolution 100. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's hang back relatively far. We're going to do a follow at 80 million. And see how that goes. And we are going to approach relatively slowly. Also, just check your fuel levels. Oh god, that is more than enough fuel. Something is slowing us down for some reason. I don't know what. Contact on radar. Well, active search sensors, but, you know, we call it radar because it's just a nice, easy way to refer to it. Okay, now, switch, contact, move, here, follow. 80 million, we'll say. Uh, well, now let's do a little bit closer, 70. Part of the thing is, I do not know. Now, this target looks like they're dead in the water, interestingly enough. Okay, I wasn't exactly planning on doing this, but I think we're going to have a change of plans. We are going to bring the 
assault carrier over. I wasn't, again, I was not planning on trying to capture anything. But they've got a ship that's literally dead in the water. While I don't care to use the ship, it doesn't hurt to bring it home and scrap it. And it gives us plenty of intel once we capture it. I just need to capture it. So I think we're in a position where I can probably reasonably safely do five day ticks and not be surprised. Now we are attempting communication. We know that that's not going to go well. Especially because they sure as hell aren't going to communicate with combat ships. Diplomatically, I mean. Now, again, that ship is going to have to have a tug bring it home. You have 20 more days until you arrive. Also, I don't think we refitted the assault carrier, which is one of the reasons why it's taking so damn long to get here. And I sure as hell didn't refit the actual shuttles, which is certainly something I should do when we get home. Um, but I need to build one more naval shipyard complex to do that. We do have that queued, but right now we're building another set of military academies to ship off. I believe it was Depsilon Indy for a governor's um, academy. I believe the military academy is the one I'm thinking of for this. Um, yes, I believe that's correct. Also, it looks like we might have already been shipping some out, but I don't know if any of it's actually arrived. That's going to be kind of the issue. Uh, it looks like a reasonably safe bet that none of it has arrived yet. You have another 15 days. Um, okay, yep, we've uh, picked up quite a bit of stuff. There's quite a few things here. And they got a Siege class, which is interesting. Because the Siege was their smaller commercial vessel, if I recall correctly. Okay, first things first, we need to move to the Tekka. We can engage the Tekka, no problem at, with our guns. Um, nope, that's 2 million. That is way, way too far. 200,000. Thank you very much. How long to move to engage that? Looks like about an hour. Let's plug in your targeting computers. Oh, shite. They got quite a bit of stuff over there, apparently. Now, unfortunately, they're flying away from us, which is going to slow us down and moving to engage, but I can't do large time increments. Otherwise, if the game decides that, oh, yeah, no, they turned around, uh, we will end up right on top of them, which will result in us taking... Uh, damage that I do not wish to take. That is why you will see me often do these somewhat conservative time increments as we close. And obviously do 
shorter and shorter time spans as we close more. I, here I could probably have done a couple more two minute increments. I just, I don't feel like getting a surprise. And weapon fire. Wonderful. Now we have the Gatus up here, which apparently has a stupid amount of uh, other stuff. So we are going to move to 10 million kilometers. Uh, let's do five. You were looking at an hour to do that, so. Oh, yeah, you guys still have your targeting computers going. Contact reestablished. Bunch of, bunch of Tekkas in the AX, but I just need to nuke the Gatsas with a um, missile salvo. Like there's a yake over there, over there with the siege. Double check. I'm, I'm pretty sure the siege was a commercial, was it not? Yes, it was. I'm surprised that they have a commercial vessel out. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that, all things considered. Um, now you guys realistically probably already have a targeting solution on the Gatos for this. Uh, yeah, definitely. You have a 46.3 million kilometer. Uh, target on it. Um, fire. Almost have contact. And goodbye. Okay, now we can close further. The only downside, obviously, of nuking that one is that we lose contact with the Tekas for some reason. It kind of will slow us down a little bit at getting on to them. Uh, this is 83. Move to 200,000. Update your orders. You were looking at... About half an hour until you close. Looks like the Siege does not have any escorts beyond that yay because I probably should have already picked them up if there were any Tekkas or other Yayx with it. But I guess it depends on if we picked up these Tekkas and Yayx here as a result of um, their, or, you know, from our passives because of their thermals and EM signature, which it would most likely be thermals, if anything else, or if anything, eh. It would most likely be thermals if I had to make a guess. Oh, also, let's update your targeting computer. Uh, so, well, first, also, just tell you everybody to cease fire. You are going to fire. You well, you guys are moving to Tekka 83, so do not engage Tekka 83 until you've destroyed everything else. Tekka 83 will be the last one engaged here.
big question is if we have enough maintenance supplies to do this. That's part of our problem is that I really don't think we do. Or if we do, we will be cutting it very, very close. They engage the Yayx starting with 37 and 38. I'm going to have you actually engage a different target. You guys join in on engaging 38 because I don't want him to be shooting at me. Now we engage the Tekka with all of our fire, or with all of our weapons, and oof, the Albert T. Harris is uh, almost out of maintenance supply. Okay, now we move to engage the Siege. Eesh, yeah, uh, the Albert T. Harris is going to go, I think, and just not use its weapons anymore because I don't need it to run out. Of maintenance supplies this far from home, because I don't have a means of getting it more if it runs out. So, you know, I'd rather not... Although I suppose we could just nuke these guys. We got the missiles, and admittedly the plan is to probably replace these missiles in the nearest future anyway. Yeah, screw it. Albacore, you engage the Siege. And Albatross, you engage the Yayik. Uh, we do not currently have. Why do I not currently have you? Well, which one fired? Is the Albacore? Why can't you? Oh, because you need to close the four million. Okay, yes, that's because that that ship has the cloaking device thing. Ah, uh, that does mean I need to readjust my target because you guys are about to run out. Close to three million. down missile away well missiles technically but whatever down wonderful uh leave your actives on fly back to soul refuel resupply and load Ordnance. Where is the assault carrier group? They are in FL Virginus still. Let's head back to GL and uh, see how things are going there. Looks like still nothing going on, which isn't surprising because not even a day has gone by. Uh, whoops, I think I forgot to. Uh, Tell you guys to shut off your targeting computers. Yes, I did. That's certainly going to slow things down. Let's correct that. And now you're good to go. Now, is there more stuff in that system? Potentially. Thirteen more days. Okay, the jump stabilization ship has arrived to be able to jump through and stabilize the other side of the jump point. 
Uh, the Albion has proceeded to suffer problems. And the Albert T. Harris has damaged its power plant. That's fun. Uh, the reality is the carrier strike group is not moving at all, so I don't know why doing one-hour increments is resulting in only like five minutes or something of time progression there. Oh shit, is that going to slow you guys down? Uh, no, you're still reporting a total travel time of 10 days, so it looks like uh, luckily it's not slowing you down significantly, if it is. I think you're good enough to be able to launch all of your boarding craft. Attach. Contacts. Attempt boarding. Action. All formations. This will get us the most up-to-date information on what they have technology-wise, which is very helpful. I'm honestly shocked that we're getting lucky in getting this. And we're not being fired upon at all, so their weapon systems might be dead too. Loaded. You guys are going to fly back. A uh, bunch of people getting medals for destroying hostile targets. Uh, we are destroying a bunch of crew, which is more or less what we would have expected. 905 crews still remain, however. And we got the ship already. Wonderful. So, what do this, does this tell us about the Quarion? It has a Sea Whiz. This is a big ship to have just a Sea Whiz, apparently. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just me. But uh, I do not believe that a... What? Like... Almost 10,000 ton ship is going to have. That's a. There is no fucking way that that is accurate. Absolutely no way. Also, what do you guys classify this thing as anyway? So I can find it in my list. You're labeling it as SC, which I've never... Okay, Scout, it looks like. Really? See, when I think Scout... Oh, shh. Okay, good. That was not the... That was not that one. Um, as I was saying, when I think Scout, I don't think of a military vessel. But, I mean, technically, sure, but it's mostly a case of why would I build such a large ship to serve as a scout? Use fighters. It makes the most sense. Also, one thing I do want to note, if I do end up doing a big guns naval doctrine for a future series, we will still technically use fighters. 
the idea will be that these fighters are basically just recon vessels. Their job is to serve a similar role as float planes did that were launched from, like, battleships and cruisers. That's one thing I do want to note if I ever do do one. So you have a SeaWiz 200, which I'm not really able to get too much info on. A range of 1,000 kilometers, which makes sense. 20,000 kilometers a second rate of for uh, tracking speed. Active search sensor. I don't know what th that is such a large sensor. I can guarantee you that. Annoying that I can't see how heavy it is because the game just doesn't allow me to click on this for a class that is locked. Which is fine, but it's annoying that it means I can't actually see how large the damn thing is. But I imagine it's pretty sizable. And we could kick on Space Master and check. Unlock design. It is 450 tons for 126 million kilometers. Do you really need 126 million kilometers of early warning on an active sensor? No. I mean, you can get that in the future with more advanced tech, yes. But you don't need it right now. But yeah, no, that is not a good design in my opinion at all. I really wish there was an option to just say load all ground units and just leave it to the game to freaking pick them up. Maybe it's just me, but that doesn't seem like such a hard concept to have a button here that's basically just load up ground units. Because that's only going to pick up those. That's the issue with me. Is that it does not pick up everything because of the way this system works here. And I don't really... This is also one reason why you will probably not see me actually use our our shuttles for boarding all that often because this this is not a nice system maybe i don't know how it, so maybe if i design something above the platoon level and just put them all under it it'll work because i know you know obviously with our expeditionary strike group i can tell them to load up the top level and just make sure to click load all subunits and it'll pick everybody up and it'll well you can't separate a unit across multiple shuttle or well multiple ships transports whatever um it will pick them all up and spread them out. So I might end up needing to do that and we go down to, what is it? Uh, I believe it's 40 transports right now. We go to 39 actual combat units and then one like, I don't know, brigade, whatever it is. Company? Uh, well, no, it wouldn't be company because I'd have to kick this down. Oh, God, I'd have to give it a stupidly large freaking platoon HQ. Or, excuse me, a stupidly large HQ to be able to do this. Because I would need 250 times 39. Which I don't care to do the math off the top of my head for that. It would need, like, just under... 10,000 of command capability. We could do it. I think we will. I think we're going to redesign. We're going to scrap the existing Marines as they are. We're going to have this guy limp towards the jump point, I guess. Also, turn off your actives. I don't need you having them on. 
What the hell is status? O was zero one. I've never seen that before. That's a new status as far as I know. Okay, let's uh Yeah, you keep following the carrier strike group as closely as you can. You are going to continue moving towards here, and again, we're going to go for an 80 million. Um, whoops, did I do a move to location or a follow? Follow, okay, good. Looking at to arrive a couple of hours. And we're picking something up on passives, whatever the far reach and the thangos are. Uh, it looks like the Thango is a new one, and I think that is true because I don't <laughs> can't say I recall seeing a Thango uh, during my test runs. We have basically zero freaking intel on it. We established contact with the Thango. Now, they presumably haven't picked us up, maybe? I guess that depends upon what their passives, you know, their deep space tracking stations on the planet are like. And that assumes they have one. They may not. But they probably do. I'd be shocked if they don't. Especially if they had scouts way out here that were getting destroyed. They presumably sent them out there because they picked up probably the raiders. I picked up the Shah Yu's. Which, again, we don't really have any intel on. Also, supposedly there are three of those. We're only picking up two. Now, with the size of these things being what they are, we should probably pick them up on... Well, so a couple things should be noted. One, we're, I think we're picking them up on our um, EM sensors. That's the logical conclusion to me, is that we're picking them up on our EM passives because... They're not moving, as far as we can tell, so we're sure Zell not picking them up on thermals. And since they seem to be blipping in and out, what they're probably doing is they're toggling their active sensors off and on, which is something, to my knowledge, the AI does do. And theoretically, obviously, as a player, you could. There are pros and cons to that, obviously. If you're using missiles that don't have good enough active sensors of their own to be able to continue tracking the target, uh, that doesn't really work. Um, or having something else illuminating the target. You need something illuminating the target at the very least, basically. Whether that is your ships that fired the weapon system or anything else. Like an early warning craft. That's right. Theoretically, we could be doing that. I would just need to have this thing picking up the enemy ships on its active sensor and maintaining that lock. But theoretically, we could actually design, if we wanted to, a missile that has stupid amounts of range, probably fairly slow, um, and then just use the early warning craft to be able to pick up the target and illuminate it for the missile. 
because just something needs to be lighting it up. They don't need to be in the same fleet or anything. Seem to be a little bit more consistently keeping the larger ships lit up on our passives. Uh, New Alien ships, the Reno class, those I believe are also new because I don't recall seeing them before again, but uh, it's certainly been a while and I wasn't paying attention to the ship classes when I was doing my testing of point defense. But with the size of all these things, I think once we get into active sensor range, we will have a much better idea as to what they have. And it is a metric shit ton. <laughs> uh, well, that answers that question. They got a fleet, a literal fleet. And some things with names that I cannot possibly pronounce like at all but um they have a lot of shit they they have a lot of shit so so much shit okay ah uh, boy oh boy well the lucky thing is that the large stuff i can fire my missiles at no problem from a distance thing is i don't got enough missiles for all this because I wasn't expecting such a massive fleet. Which sucks. Because that means I got two options. Try to rush into service a quailer and bring it out here to resupply the fleet. Or stabilize this side of the jump point so the fleet can head back home. The downside of that? It doesn't matter who stabilizes the jump point. Everybody can use a stabilized jump point. So if I do that, there is absolutely nothing stopping them from sending their fleets through the jump point and coming for us. Absolutely nothing stopping them. Now, the obvious thing to launch first is to launch our strike fighters and attempt to knock out the Chonors from a distance. Those are the biggest ships they have. The question is, how many missiles does it frickin' take? Because I'm assuming it's a fair few. And I just legitimately do not believe that we have the firepower necessary. Also, these guys technically are not loaded up correctly. So what I need to do is I need to launch them. And then we are going to redock them. This will presumably wake them up. Now, for some reason, you guys just aren't Reloading, and I don't know why. I assume it's glitching out because, again, added more stuff to that. Oh, wait, actually, no, no, no. I think I know why. I know why. I forgot to go into here. 
Strike Fighter update this to say, hey, you guys are supposed to carry six missiles. Ordinance template, copy from class, copy to fleet. Now what should happen is that the game will realize, wait, you guys don't have all your stuff. Well, I guess in theory you guys are technically loaded up, so maybe the game won't bother. Yeah, for some reason you're not updating your current loadout, but whatever. You know what? It's fine. I think you guys you guys can go ahead and just fire everything, and then we can ship you out. Contacts. We have the Charnors. Let's go and engage the first one. We're going to active on for you guys. I don't recall what your active sensor range is. Let's double check that. Your individual active sensors are... Well, the most important thing really is more so the range of the missiles and... Your missile fire control. So the missiles have 3 million, which is... <laughs> yeah, we need new missiles. Ah, <sighs> yep. Because as it turns out, we're going to be doing some high altitude bombing, it seems like. So the design philosophy has changed. Do you need a missile that has almost 120,000 kilometers of speed? Not really. So what do you say about having a range of 20 million kilometers on a size 4 missile? It gets you a little under 100,000 kilometers a second of speed, but you still have... God, that is still way too much speed. You don't freaking need that much speed. The reality is I don't think we need to be any faster than like... 80,000, generally speaking, with the exception of AM, eh, AMMs, those certainly deserve to be a bit higher so that they can better react. So maybe we uh, kick you all the way up to like 50 million. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Of course, granted, this is the aim 43B, this is assuming we stick with this beyond this engagement, because the reality is the plan was more so to go with a size 6 missile going forward. The biggest difference is that the size 6 missiles also have twice the warhead. Now, double check. Did I research the uh, Tricobolt? I did. So we need to update this to reflect that we now have Tricobolt, which gets you back up above 80. Uh, one moment while I get all this updated. That is just no. What's the range on our beam or excuse me, our missile fire control on the current iteration of stuff for our actual ships? It is almost 180 million kilometers. Do we need 180 million? Not really. So our our active sensors are 89 in the absolute best case scenario. 
currently. Technically 88.9, but whatever, we say 89. Just makes life easier. So do I want to design a missile that has more range than my current active sensors? Probably, because realistically, the missiles are more likely to stay in service for longer than the active sensors are. So how much further do we go? I don't want to push it to the limit of the missile fire control for one primary reason, that is that the enemy has ECM. And apparently cloaking also will affect this to an extent. So the question is, do I do like 100? I think 100 would be fine. Of course, it means you're no longer a RIM 46. You are now a RIM 8100, which lo and behold, I happen to have down here because I just designed this already. Because I was clearly thinking about it. Now, thing is, I don't know what spe uh, what's the speed of the, uh... well, I guess technically we won't know the speed. It will be, oh no, max observed speed is about eight and a half thousand. So we're going to increase our target speed as well. Uh, we're going to just round and we're going to say 8,600. The reason we're doing that is just to have a, Basically tell the game, I want at least a 50% hit chance on a target going at this speed. The reality is, uh, we more than have that. Uh, we have, with our current version that we have designed here, we would have a 100% hit chance out to 8647. which I'm fine with. But yes, we do need to update this. All of these to reflect the, uh, the new hit chance preferences. Because now we have actual, you know, ships that aren't the dinky raiders. God, that is just way too much, and I really don't need it to be that fast. Okay. Um, okay, uh, follow. You guys do not have the frickin' right. Uh, uh, so, I don't technically need you having your actives running. Technically. That is not required. And the reason for that is quite simply that so long as I keep the target illuminated by the primary fleet, or well, rather by the fleet, uh, you don't need it. So, I'm gonna have you fly to 3 million. We are probably within range of their missiles. My plan is to get in there, fire, then get the hell out. That is the plan. We shall see how well we do at actually sticking to it. We will be able to fire at him at 3.26 million kilometers. Good thing I gave you guys plenty of fuel. Like, holy crap. You have nine days of fuel at full power. Do you need that much? No. Is it 
turning out to be beneficial potentially now? Sure as hell is. In fact, actually, what I should probably do is just tell you guys to uh, open fire as soon as you have the opportunity on them. That way, as soon as I see you guys fire your missiles, how many are in this again? I We have 10, so once I see basically 10 salvos of 5 fired off, you guys are hightailing it back. Okay, they are bringing out their... Okay, we might have a change of plans. We're not in, uh, engaging the... Uh, Chonors first, because they are actually bringing out their fleet. A change of plans. What do I move to engage? Uh, well, what's the biggest thing? Looks to be the far reaches. So let's change of plans. Yeah, yeah, timer. I, I know, I know. We'll, we're going to let this part run a bit long to, uh, Get this first engagement in. So far reach. Three, three, three. Range of plans. Engage you. Assign fleet. Uh, okay, they have launched missiles. So we already lost three of our fancy schmancy new fighters. Uh, five salvos, five out. Um, does not look like we had any hits, at least nothing worth writing home about. They have point defense. Which is not a surprise, of course. Where the hell are you guys going to get to the fleet? Uh, I think we're down to just two of our fighters. Part of our issue is we're not actually picking up their missiles, so we don't actually get any intel on them for what these ones are firing. And nope, we lost all of our strike fighters. They have missiles with fairly decent range. Now, obviously, they didn't fire them at this distance. But we're probably looking at about 20, maybe... Th well, I say about 20. Probably looking at about 30-ish million kilometer range if I had to make a guess. That would be my guess. We can move the fleet a bit closer and attempt to engage this group that split off. Obviously, we would do that next time. The question is, who's firing the missiles? And presumably, they all have some missiles, but I feel like you're going to call a class the Far Reach, which is 
the game itself generated that name. Or, you know, assigned that name to the fleet. Or to that ship design, rather. I, I would love to think that the game is sort of telling me that that's the one that has the most missiles because it's intended to be, like, your missile artillery ship, basically, for lack of a better way to describe it. And so, presumably, that's the one I want to engage first. It's also their biggest stuff, so that's another thing to add. Now, we've got about 13 days to try to wrap this up and then get in here and pick up the survivors, which, haha, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. They have very old armor, it should be noted. Ceramic composite is pretty old, and I don't think we actually ever equipped it to any of our ships because I think we skipped it, basically. But nonetheless, it's... It's a very old armor design. Like I said, I think we might have skipped it. Because I see composite, laminate composite, and then biphase carbide, and then crystalline composite. So, yeah, I'm inclined to think we might have skipped over the armor that they're currently using. Because the next thing is super dense armor. Which is very different. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and tell the fleet to close a little bit more. to 40 million. Nope, that's 4 million. One more zero. Thank you very much. Okay, and then they're back. Oh, shit. Missiles. Okay, uh, we have intel on these missiles, which is not... I, I basically already knew this info. It's nothing new. It is a fucking boatload of missiles however holy shit well uh clearly they did pick us up because <laughs> there's no explanation or no other explanation as to how the hell they're firing this many missiles at us if they had not picked us up oh that's obvious they definitely picked us up Now it's a question of, can we deal with the sheer number of this? Because this is a lot more than what I had for my testing. And we don't have four CAs and four CLs, which is what I actually was using in my testing. Okay, we survived that salvo. I'm gonna this part's gonna run quite a bit longer because I want to get okay, a bunch more detected. These are decent range size for missiles. They can't possibly be just size four. They have to be using two stage. I I highly, highly freaking doubt that they're launching these missiles almost 60 million kilometers or so as size four missiles 
especially with the number of them, 105 in some of those salvos, they've got to be part of a two-stage system. Biggest thing is, I don't think we have nearly enough AMMs to be able to deal with that number of missiles. Yep, and they fired some more. So, yeah, I just don't think we actually will have enough AMMs to whittle down their numbers. We will probably be forced to pull back. But at the end of the day, it is a bit of a question of who's going to run out first. And it looks like we've run out of missiles. So we're going to be stuck relying on Eesh, God, this is probably going to hurt. Um, okay, I think our we defense lasers basically said, uh, yeah, no, we don't feel like firing. But do we take any damage? Doesn't look like it, which is great. That's the case, but yeah, we've already run out of missiles. And we haven't even closed into our missile range. Yep, I think we're going to have to pull back and rethink this, so... Everybody make your way back to the jump point. We're going to have to stabilize this side of the jump point. Is not something I wanted to do while there was an active hostile species on the other side. And yeah, I don't know what the hell our CLs are doing. They just don't seem to be, excuse me, our CAs. They don't seem to be doing their airy defense thing for some reason. Because they should be. There we go. I will manually tell you guys to target them. Because for some reason your auto target doesn't seem to be doing it.
Again, you guys are set to area defense. I don't know why the fuck you're not doing your job. Missiles. We're going to need longer range missiles of our own. And I don't know what our CA, why our CAs are failing miserably at the whole. Yeah, our CAs seem to just be acting up for some reason, where they're completely failing at uh, area defense. And I, there's zero reason as to why. To my knowledge, just the way area defense is supposed to work, and but I guess it's not consistent for some reason. It's supposed to be that as soon as something crosses this threshold, it starts being fired upon. And so long as it does not cross that cross from there to hitting you within a single or you know, within the same tick, basically your area defense stuff is supposed to fire on it. So I don't know if they're refusing to fire because of turret design, maybe, but then that just seems silly to me. But maybe that's just me. Presumably gotten out of range of their weapons. It's looking like we are going to need to get that coiler design out, so I'll do. I'll design that bef between parts. But let's get the fleet to the jump point. Get that stabilized so we can get them back home. And that's going to be a fun thing. Luckily, because we're not using box launchers on these things, I only need to have a stupidly large magazine on the coiler and an ordnance transfer system. So that's going to be it for this part. Our first attempt at going into GL Virginia's with our fleet was not the resounding success we were hoping for. But it wasn't a complete flop, necessarily. It showed us the weaknesses of our designs being largely intended basically in an anti-piracy role. We just don't have stupid long-range missiles. There are two things I can do to address this. Um, uh, the obvious one is to design a two-stage missile. We could do it. And I could launch it at a waypoint. That's right. Because we're not going to be necessarily lighting the enemy up with our actives. 
So we would have to launch it at a waypoint and have the separation occur before then. But of course, I will need to design a whole new ship or refit one of our existing designs to enable the use of a two-stage launch system. If I do that, it would probably be on the cruisers, I would think, because they'd be the best equipped for it. But I would have to... I would probably design it as a successor type design rather than as a traditional refit. You know, because it's it's a fairly major departure. And I'd probably still want to keep the current cruiser type design that we're using for our quick reaction forces. So, uh, god damn, that means I need another freaking shipyard. <laughs> um, also, the enemy has a stupid amount of missiles apparently in that fleet, but it's also a significantly larger fleet than what I was initially anticipating. I expected to be able to just kind of waltz in here and destroy it. That fleet is like probably five times our size in terms of just sheer number of ships. But the advantage we have is that we have generally superior technology. So if I can manage to, again, the main thing is just get ourselves a two-stage missile so we can fire from a distance to soften them up some more, get some longer range missiles on our strike fighters, um, get some, um, oh, what's the word phrase I'm looking for? Uh, or, well, you know, get a coiler so we can freaking resupply our, uh, AMMs, which is the main thing I really knew I, I would need to resupply is the AMMs. The, they're the main thing that are going to suck without those. So I'll get all of that design work done between parts and show it off next time but i'll see you all next time until then glory to the republic and hopefully next time we come in here we'll be much better prepared until next time goodbye and farewell <laughs>